Thank you, Dan. You're too kind. Um, dreaming can be understood in two ways. Firstly, dreaming as in your aspiration, something that you look at in the future. And secondly, dreaming is also something that appears in your subconscious, you know, that emerge as an experience when you go to sleep. Mine is in the second version, that there is something in our subconscious that brings out that experience in our dream when we sleep. And very often, I'm very afraid to go to sleep because sometimes your dream can be good, sometimes it can be bad, and sometimes you just do not know what to make sense of the dream. So today, I'm going to tell you a dream, then I hope you can help me out in making sense of this dream. So when I close my eyes and I go to sleep and I woke up, I found myself in this box, yeah, something like this room. And I do not know what to make sense of it because all around that room are full of mirrors. But there is something strange about it because I cannot see my own reflection in that mirror. But I can see the reflection of everyone else. And they all kind of look the same, of the same skin tone, same color. But I can't see myself in it. And eventually, I begin to identify myself with that image of everyone else in that room. And strangely, above each mirror, there are some words that goes deep into your psyche to tell you what you are. And one of it is the word L-A-Z-Y, lazy. And then the other mirror will show you, you are not good in math, right? You can't do calculation. And then on another mirror, there's also a word like, uh, you enjoy certain food, and you should dress in a certain way, etc. So that becomes my identity. That's not me, I feel, but there is a collective identity that has been imposed upon me. And I took it upon myself that probably that, that experience, that is me. Yeah? And I saw, or rather I heard a click, and suddenly that mirror becomes... What do you call it? Uh, you can see the other side because it's like on the other side of the room and you can see that there are people outside who don't quite look like me and they were gawking and looking inside that box that I'm in with a lot of other people and they were gazing and they were looking and they were pointing. So I feel like I'm in this box being looked at like a specimen and then that light went off and I could only see that reflection again as a mirror. And I do not know who controls the switch. But then I saw at one corner that there is this door. And on top of that door, it's not the word exit. It's the word meritocracy. It gives a sign of hope. But there are all these people standing by that door, guarding it. Yeah? Guarding it and telling me there are certain things that you need before you can get out of that door. And one of it is to shed these words that are all around you and be like the people outside. So I tried my best, but there's always a limit to how many people can go out because the gatekeepers, that I call them, will always be in negotiation with the gatekeepers outside whom I do not know who they are. And then eventually, a few people will be let off and the rest will just have to stay in. And so I decided this is not the way. I, I feel so suffocating in, in this box. And I gathered a few people and we just sit at one corner and we start chipping away at that mirror trying to get out. And while doing that, I woke up. I woke up and I do not know who I am. And now I'm in this dark room and I see people who doesn't look like me. And then I see there's a box in front of me, which is transparent. And I can see people inside, and they all look the same. And I'm observing them now. I do not know who they are, but somehow I feel that there's some affinity with them. And then along came this person and said, I was from in that box, and now I'm out because I want to have nothing to do with those people in that box. They are good for nothing. You look, you can see from that transparent uh, uh, 
a mirror, there's those words, lazy and things like that. No, I'm not like them. That's why I'm outside here. And I don't want to have anything to do with them. I'm successful. Look at all the other people around us. This is me. I'm part of them. And then you can see somehow, because it's a, it's a transparent mirror, you can somehow see your own reflection. And for the first time, I see how I look like. And I see myself as an individual now. Yeah. And I begin to see, hey, I look quite a bit like those people inside that box. Um, but I do not know who I am. So I'm in an identity crisis. I begin to question, who am I? Why am I outside this box and those people are inside? And I went to the, I saw a small door again. That brings me to inside of it, but I couldn't enter because there's all these gatekeepers there. And I asked, look, why don't you open that door and let those people out? And the gatekeeper said, I think they are best inside because we can protect them. And, and that is what the gatekeepers from the other side say that those people want to remain inside. And I couldn't make sense of this. So I gathered a few people and we go to a corner and we start chipping in trying to break that box from the outside. And then I woke up again. <laughs> Very much like Inception, yeah? And uh, when I woke up, here I am. Here I am. And I tried to make sense of my dream. Am I someone from the inside trying to get out? Or someone from the outside trying to get in? I couldn't make sense of it. Whatever it is, I know that there's a box to be broken. And I dream of a place without boxes. And the first instance of the dream is the freedom from. I want to be free from that kind of stereotypes, that kind of box. The second dream was freedom too. I want the freedom to be able to do things without being categorized that I have a certain limitation because of where I'm from, etc. Now, for us to stop categorizing people and assigning stereotypes, I think that becomes one aspect of the Singapore dream. We all live together as a people, and at the end of the day, is the freedom to be ourselves without all these stereotypes and categorizations. To traverse the space and to interact and learn from each other a free spirit of a truly open world and to learn from each other, not to control each other or to put each other in place. And then I woke up. I woke up. So it's more dreams. Yeah? <laughs> and I woke up and I began to see that I'm in a different place and there's a dark space in front of me. And then the light came off and I began to realize even that space that I call Singapore is a box in itself. And then I began to see that there are many other smaller boxes and they are labeled as class, religion, sexual orientation, gender, etc. And these are boxes that we still live with and that has prevented us from being who we are truly to attain that freedom to be. And at the end of the day, regardless of what, I think we have to dream ourselves as human beings in this open world to learn with each other and not to categorize people into boxes. That is my Singapore dream, and that is a dream that I feel is not just restricted to nationalism, but a dream that traverses that, that we all are part of the global citizens, and therefore, first, we have to see ourselves as individuals with certain basic rights, and to learn from each other and to promote a more peaceful world. Thank you. <laughs>